Hello. It's been a while. I really had no time. And today I will answer your question that you asked me in comments. Uh, but before going to this video, I want to remind you that you are only sponsor of this channel. And links are in the description. So if you want to support me, you can. And your comments and your likes are also very important for me. So let's go. Any updates on the prisoners of war from Azov? Uh, yes, there are trials every few weeks and every time someone of them gets punished for war crimes and unfortunately in Russia there is no death penalty. Do you know anyone who was living in Ukraine and got evacuated to a western country? Yes, half of my class, my classmates, were evacuated to Russia and to west 50-50. Question about mobilization of pro-Russian Ukrainians in pro-Russian regions. And yes, Ukraine made forced mobilization in eastern regions. And the worst thing is that in eastern regions, every scene is 20 times more extreme than in western regions. Like you can find tons of videos in Telegram where soldiers just forcing civilian men to walk with them. And most of these videos are from Odessa. But as I know, now mobilization in different parts of Ukraine are equally cruel because Ukraine has lack of manpower. Do you believe Ukraine is persecuting the Orthodox Church? Do you think that in some way this provides Russia with more solid justification for the war? apart from the other reasons you have mentioned for the special military operation. Uh, yes, Ukraine openly oppressed the Orthodox Church and keep oppressing it. Uh, because Ukraine has two Orthodox Churches, uh, both are supported sup and supporting current Ukrainian government, but Eastern Church was oppressed because it was associated with Russia. And there were detentions and arrests of priests and captures of churches, by radicals and also some direct uh, restrictions from the government and also Ukraine changed holidays like Christmas and Day of Saint Nicholas and many believers in Ukraine support Russia because of this and speaking of me I am non-believer so for me it isn't justification but it's it illustrates Ukrainian freedom, as it is. Percentage of people in Mariupol who supported the Donetsk People Republic before war. Uh, speaking about active supporters, maybe 5%. Uh, but speaking about people who sympathized DPR and Russia, I think more than a half of people. How do people in Eastern Ukraine have such a strong attachment to Russia? Uh, mostly because of our culture, language, traditions. As I already said in my other videos, there is no difference between Donbas people and Russian people. And also many people here were in Russia many times and have relatives in Russia. And they know that it's much better country, better developed than Ukraine. Uh, do you think it was justified for the DPR to oppose the regime change in 2014 and later for Russia to launch the special military operation? Since although there was much Western influence for the Maidan protests, and many Ukrainians at the end did not support the old government. It seems that new government was popularly supported by many Ukrainians at that time. And I think in 2014, Donbass made the right choice and Putin made a big mistake when he didn't support us. Uh, because most of my relatives, maybe almost all of them supported and support in Russia. And speaking about 2022, Russia had no choice. There was no other way from this crisis. Ukraine would never recognize Crimea Russian and same thing with Donetsk and Lugansk. It, it was the only choice, only way. And if not Western help, this war would end in few days or weeks with no bloodshed. Question about drama theater. I want to say that everyone in Mariupol knows that it was exploded by Ukraine and there are enough witnesses and there are also enough witnesses in the internet, especially in Russian. And if you want me, I can translate them and upload here. And 
All of them saying that Ukrainian soldiers evacuated their families a few days before the explosion. And just think, uh, Russia had not a single reason to destroy it. I mean, only Ukraine getting benefits, profits from it. Why do Russia need to destroy its own drama theater, own city, own people and waste and bomb? It's expensive and jet is expensive too. And Ukraine from destroying it got a strong support in media and a reason to support Ukraine after this provocation. So it's just logic. And question about refugees who returned. And a lot of people returned here. Maybe most of those who left and a lot of families reunited. And about how do they know when to com come back? Uh, there are a lot of information about Mariupol in Russian Telegram channels and you can find everything about Mariupol, uh, like state of every building and every place and citizens from abroad can search for it. So yes, there are a lot of channels about reconstruction, about new infrastructure, so all of it is in the internet. What's the percentage of people who return from Ukraine-occupied territories to Mariupol? Uh, not many, because it's hard to leave Ukraine, especially for men, uh, because of mobilization and uh, men to have to pay a lot of money uh, to leave Ukraine, maybe 10,000 of euro. And it's also expensive, because you need to go through Pre-Baltics or Belarus. And about abusing the housing allocation system, mm, there are a lot of bureaucracy to get compensation apartment and it usually takes months or sometimes even a year. So it's really hard to abuse the system. I think maybe you can get some money this way, but not apartment. Is it true Ukrainians who live in Mariupol have to apply for Russian citizenship to receive medical care and pensions? Uh, it isn't true yet, but it will be soon, because there are no restrictions to Ukrainian citizens now. And my grandfather in Donetsk still has Ukrainian passport, despite he supports Russia and he isn't living in Ukraine since 2014. Uh, but uh, this situation with Ukrainian citizens will change, uh, because in July people without Russian citizenship uh, will be considered as foreigners and could be deported. Is life in Mariupol better now or before? I think before, but it's getting better every day and perspectives are much better than before war. Question about the renovation and that the renovated buildings have poor quality on the inside. Uh, it's partly true, but uh, the problem is that many different companies from different regions of Russia are working on reconstruction. So the quality is different too. And yes, there are places where renovation is terrible, uh, but there were cases when after photos of bad work were published in the internet, problems were solved and quickly fixed. Are construction workers flocking to Mariupol and the Donbas from other parts of Russia or can Mariupol and Donbas supply enough on its own? Uh, most of workers are from other Russian regions and from Middle Asia countries, but many local people also work in most of local people are working too. How is the feeling in Mariupol overall now? Are people healing well emotionally? And is the city coming alive again? Uh, yes, people are healing, but it depends on the type of person, because someone is happy and someone isn't. Uh, but most of people believe in a better future. Are people from Mariupol go to the mainland Russian for work easily, and people from main Russian land come to Mariupol as well? Uh, there are good salaries in Mariupol, and I don't know anyone who goes to old Russian territories to work. Uh, but many people from Russia are going here to help us, and salaries here are higher than in most of Russian regions. Question about the ecology of Mariupol. Uh, after war, sea ecology improved, and there were dolphins here last summer, and there are plans to make Mariupol a place for tourists, so these problems have to be solved. Uh, but I didn't find any information on it. A question about Mariupol universities and about Ukrainian Mariupol. Uh, 
internet universities. Uh, we have three universities and many colleges and I showed all of them in my other videos and they are working just as before war, maybe except places where uh, rebuilding didn't finish yet. And I have friends who are studying in Mariupol State University and Priozovsky Technical University. Everything is all right there. And yes, Ukrainians have same universities in the internet, but with much less students. And for me, it's maybe it's just a nice way to steal Ukrainian government's money. Which areas of new Russian territories are safe to visit and which ones would you avoid? Uh, territories near Azov Sea are safe. Mariupol, Berdansk, Melitopol and Lugansk is also safe. It's far from the front line. And visiting Donetsk is risky, but Donetsk is still alive. I visited it a few weeks ago and it's much safer after Avdeevka was liberated. And uh, speaking about dangerous cities, frontline cities like Bakhmut, Avdeevka, Severodonetsk is really dangerous, but I will go there this summer anyway, and I really want to make video about it. My opinion about how this special military operation will end. A um, few months ago I thought that it will end with a draw, a stalemate, uh, but now I think it's more likely will end with Russian victory because Russia has a strategic initiative and Ukraine has more and more problems, internal and military problems, and Russia taking cities, villages now, and Ukraine can do anything, and also West decreases Ukrainian no, support of Ukraine. So for me, it seems like Russia will win. How long do you think Russia will take to win the war, and when they do? What do you think the terms of peace or complete surrender will be? Uh, I think and I hope that this will end this year. And I really hope for capitulation of Ukraine, or at least uh, that Russian cities in Ukraine will be under Russian control. Where are the borders of Novorossiya? Does Russia need to take control of any more territories from Ukraine, in addition to the four next oblasts? I like this map, and in fact all Ukraine 10 years ago was Russian-speaking, but on the western Ukraine people have hate towards Russia, and they are really different from us, they have different mentality. So maybe they have to be independent if they want to. And I want to see Kharkov and Odessa as parts of Russia because it's Russian cities. What are your thoughts on the Russian victory in Avdiivka and recent successes in Western Donetsk? I am really happy about it because these places were fortified since 2014. So for nine years. And I really hope that after Russia will take it, everything will be much faster and easier. And also, what are the Donetsk people views on this? Uh, most of Donetsk people are glad about it because it's much safer in Donetsk now. And yes, it's a big victory. Uh, are Eastern Donetsk is excited to be reunited with their Western brothers? And how do Lugansk's feel now that they're been reunited with their North? I know many families uh, who were separated with Frontline and even my family. I had my grandparents in Donetsk and I myself lived in Mariupol. And it was no way for me to visit Donetsk uh, quickly and cheap. Uh, road took 10 hours or so maybe even day sometimes after COVID-19. And now it takes just two hours and much cheaper and I can visit Donetsk anytime. And many people, many of my friends have same situation with their relatives in other DPR cities. Uh, but I think it's better to talk about it after this war ends because now it's hard to visit many liberated cities like Bakhmut or even Severodonetsk. So that was all for today. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.